Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape and Lopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Ciao, Cape artists, and welcome back to the Heart of a Viking. This week, we are traveling all the way to Europe, specifically to Italy, and we're going to be learning about the ancient Italian mosaics. Mosaics are a type of artwork that require a lot of patience and time. So as you take on the challenge of creating these beautiful mosaics today, remember that many artists don't complete their artwork all in one sitting. It is okay if you become tired, or you run out of time, or you start to get frustrated, or your fingers start to get sticky, it's okay if you come back to it later, or maybe even another day. A lot of artists take multiple days to finish a work of art. So let's grab our creativity, put on our thinking caps, and head on over to our art making space as we learn a little bit more about the ancient Italian mosaics. Mosaic is the art of decorating a surface with pictures and patterns made of little pieces of stone, glass, tiles, and all different colors. Mosaics can be used indoors on walls, floors, and ceilings, and also outside. Mosaics are made by setting colored pieces into a mortar, like a cement, which hardens and holds the pieces into place. Some mosaics are made out of round pebbles and have only two or three colors. Other mosaics are made of marble. And many mosaics, particularly the ones in Italy, are made of terracotta tiles. Terracotta is a fired clay that's been baked in an oven. Terracotta tiles come in many different colors and can be used for colorful pictures as well as patterns. Some tiles look as if they're made of pure gold. These tiles are actually made of glass and they have a very thin leaf of gold stuck to one side. The side with the gold gets put into the mortar and then the gold can be seen through the glass, but cannot be scratched off. Mosaics often last for a very long time. There are still plenty of mosaics which were made by the ancient Romans. They can be seen in Italy, England, and France, as well as some other countries that were once part of the Roman Empire. Many beautiful mosaics date back from the early Christian and Byzantine eras, from about 300 AD to 1400 in Italy, Greece, and other countries. The mosaics in churches usually have pictures that tell stories of the Bible. Nowadays, mosaics are still used in all sorts of ways. Mosaics are most often used to brighten up public places. Modern mosaics use all sorts of materials. Mosaic tiles, bathroom tiles, broken roof tiles, broken dishes, broken mirrors, even bits of metal and old bricks. The supplies we'll need to create our gondola mosaic are a glue stick, some scissors, a pencil. We will be needing some colored papers. Um, most likely everybody's going to be needing some black, a couple of different blues, so I have a light blue and a dark blue, and then the white paper is the one that we're creating on. I did not have all the colors I needed. We're also going to be needing gray, and I did not have a gray piece of paper. So I just grabbed a scrap of my white paper that I had from another project last week, and I colored it with a gray crayon. And I also wanted a different shade of blue. I wanted like a third shade of blue. So I grabbed a piece of my scrap again, and I colored this one with the marker, just so you could see the difference. The marker and the crayon look a little different when you color. So if you don't have all the colors you need, just grab some white paper and color it the color that you need. All right, so let's get all this out of the way for just a second. And we're going to be starting right now with our white piece of paper. So this white paper is uh, a little bit larger than what we need. So we're going to actually fold this in half and cut it in half to make it a half sized paper. the size we're going to be using to make our artwork on. We want to put it tall in front of us, so we want it to be vertical. Then I need my pencil for drawing. I'm going to draw three things, a horizon line, a bridge, and a gondola. So here we go.
All right, so there's our drawing. We kept it really, really simple because with a mosaic, we don't want it to get too, too detailed. All right, so we're gonna start with whichever part you want. I'm going to start by choosing the things that need to be black. So the things that are going to be black are the entire gondola, the driver, the man who's rowing the boat, and this part right here. This is like a shadow under the bridge showing us how wide and how deep the bridge is. So I need some black pieces. So grab your black paper and you're going to cut some little strips off of the end of it. Once you have your little strips, you're going to cut those into rectangles or squares or triangles. All of those shapes work really well for a mosaic. I'm going to now use my glue stick to apply some glue to just half of my gondola. I don't want the glue to dry, so I'm only gonna do half right now. And I'm going to start fitting in my, my pieces. If I find that my pieces are a little large, like that one is a little bit large, before it, it dries and sticks, I can take it off, cut it into a smaller piece, and what's great is that smaller piece is probably gonna be useful somewhere else. Now I like when my mosaic pieces have a little bit of the white showing in between. It is up to you as the mosaic artist of this project whether or not you like that too. You might not. So you can always make your pieces touch whatever you decide. I'm not worrying about whether I get glue in the lines or out of the lines because eventually there's gonna be glue everywhere. So staying in the lines is not really super important right now with that glue. Okay, so I'm gonna call the gondola done. Even though there are still some white spaces in between for this particular project, those white spaces aren't a big deal. Next, I'm gonna start working on the man. So I wonder if there are any artists out there that are questioning why the entire boat and the man are going to be completely dark. And I'm going to let you think about that for a moment before I tell you why. All right, any good guesses? That's right. It's because the man and his gondola are in silhouette, meaning that the sun or the light source that's shining on them is so bright that it's being blocked by something. Maybe this bridge. Okay, I think my gondola and the driver are both finished. Next, I'm gonna do one other spot black. Remember, it was the shadow under the bridge. So here we go with the next color. I'm going to start with some of this color. What I'm doing now is the sky. So I chose my like brighter blue that I had used uh, my marker to color. Um, I'm doing the same technique except now because I'm in a bigger space, I'm able to use larger shapes. So that actually helps it go a lot faster too, being able to use larger shapes. They're not so small anymore. So as you can see, making these mosaics can be quite time consuming. If you find yourself getting a little bit frustrated that it's going really slow, uh, you could always take a break, leave your art, go do something else, come back later and work on it. Maybe this one takes you a long time. Maybe this one takes you several days to finish because you're not doing it all at once. And that is absolutely okay. Many, many artists don't complete their works of art in one sitting. They often will work on it, leave it, come back later. So definitely don't feel upset or frustrated. Just give yourself a moment to take a break. If you find yourself getting really frustrated, you are welcome to color some of it. So if you find yourself getting really, really frustrated and it's hard for you to cut the shapes to fit in, you absolutely could just stop doing mosaic and you could switch to coloring. Thank you. 
So you might have noticed I'm using a technique for the edges that allow me to put the piece on, get it to stick in the glue, and then whatever's hanging out the side, I just trim it off. That way I don't have to fuss so much with getting a piece that fits in there just right. All right, so it looks like I should be done, but I'm not. There's one more sky part. It's the space underneath of the bridge. If this was real um, Venice, we would be able to look through the bridge and see the sky behind it that's under it and over it. So I'm gonna continue my blue under here. Now I just need to make the, a different blue, either a darker or a lighter blue for the water, and then some gray for my bridge. Alrighty, so I'm going to continue with my light blue for my water and my gray for the sky and I'm going to work on this a little bit here and I'll be right back with you as soon as I have a finished mosaic. We have it, our finished Italian mosaic. There were a few details in mine that I did not originally ask you to add to yours, but you can if you want. One of them is in the bridge. I had some upside down U shapes that got covered up whenever I did my mosaics. So I just used my pencil to redraw them back on once the glue was dry. And then also in the water, I used some of my darker blue paper to add some ripples or some waves to make it look like the water is moving a little bit. Feel free to do that too. I hope you've enjoyed creating your Italian mosaic and I'll see you back here next time at the heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.